When looking at a satellite image of the Earth at night, you will see what appears to be a large island between China and Japan. Lights indicate where people live, so areas with no lights at all tend to be unpopulated areas, like water. But in fact, this is no island at all. It is South Korea. What appears to be the ocean by night is actually North Korea, an isolated country that lacks much electricity. The one area where lights appear by night in the country is the capital and largest city, Pyongyang. But outside the capital, rural areas and smaller cities go without power, making much of the country appear unpopulated, when it is really home to over 25 million people. Welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. Today, the most fascinating population patterns on the planet. In Australia, 85% of the entire country, or 21 million people, lives within 50 kilometers or 31 miles of the ocean. Of that 15%, or 3.7 million that lives inland, 430,000 of them live in the capital city of Canberra, which at 57 kilometers from the ocean, barely meets the requirements for being inland itself. Out of a country of 24.6 million people, only 3.3 million, or 13%, live in neither its coastline or capital city. This is because inland Australia, much of which makes up the region known as the Outback, is very difficult to inhabit. It's an extremely dry desert, with only two major rivers that run into the ocean. Water means survival, and without it, human population will be sparse. On top of the unforgiving landscape, inland Australia is famous for dangerous wild animals, such as poisonous spiders and snakes. The east coast of Australia is separated from the rest of the country by a large range of mountains, known as the Great Dividing Range which stretch from the northern tip of the country all the way to the south. Not only is inland Australia dry and difficult to live in, but the mountain range disincentivized many European colonists from heading into the outback. While much of the country is a dry and desolate desert, most of the coastal areas are lush, green, and filled with plenty of fresh water. The fact that the mountains are so close to the ocean on the east coast means that many of the valleys in the Great Dividing Range turn into massive bays as they reach sea level. The abundance of these incredible natural harbors make coastal Australia very suitable for trade and settlement. In fact, many of the country's major cities, such as Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Gold Coast, Hobart, Townsville, Darwin, and Cairns, all developed around bays and harbors. The one notable exception to this is Canberra, Australia's capital city. However, the city is not extremely inland, sitting just a two-hour drive from the ocean. It sits on the other side of the Great Dividing Range, in a greener area, home to rivers and lots of farmland. It is also a planned city, with streets laid out in rings and hexagons, and a parliament building that sits partially underneath an artificial hill. The city's inland location was an intentional attempt to draw the center of the country's power away from just the coasts. Egypt's population patterns are even more stark. A satellite image of the country at night shows a flower-like string of lights stretching from south to north where they fan out before reaching the Mediterranean Sea. The rest of the country is practically dark. Just like Australia, this is due to its geography. The Nile River starts as two rivers, with one branch beginning in Ethiopia, the other in Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya's Lake Victoria. These two rivers, the Blue and White Nile, meet in Khartoum, the capital of Sudan, where the Nile continues to flow north. When the Nile flows through Egypt, it is at its widest, feeding the green, fertile, 10-mile-wide Nile Valley. The fresh water and fertile soil provided by the Nile Valley makes it a center of agriculture and population, crisscrossed with canals, filled with farms, and dotted with towns. Even though the lush green Nile Valley makes up just 5% of Egypt's area, it holds 95% of its population. The other 5% of Egypt's population are spread across the other 95% of its area, the massive and inhospitable Sahara Desert. Out of a country home to 97.55 million people, 92.67 million live in this thin stretch of fertile land. The southern tip of Egypt's band of lights is the city of Aswan, home to the Aswan High Dam, which dams much of the Nile upriver, creating the massive Lake Nasser. The lake fills the rest of the Nile Valley in Egypt and prevents much settlement upstream. As the Nile Valley winds to the north, it is home to cities such as Kina, Sohag, Asyut, Ominya, and Benisweif, each of which are major cities home to hundreds of thousands of people. If Egypt's population pattern looks like a flower, there is a clump of lights near the north, which looks almost like a leaf. This noticeable anomaly is caused by the El Fayum Oasis, 
Once a dry basin to the west of the Nile, a flood filled it with fresh water, creating a large lake and a channel which connected it to the Nile Valley. Silt brought in from the floods make the El Fayum Oasis a fertile branch of the Nile Valley suitable for population. The Nile continues north, reaching Egypt's capital and largest city, Cairo, a city of 17 million, which is the most populous in both Africa and the Middle East. Beyond this massive city, the Nile splits into two branches that flow onward to the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile Valley becomes the even wider Nile Delta, the fan-shaped area clearly visible from the nighttime satellite. The Delta holds cities such as Danyut, Tanta, Mansoura, Damanhur, Port Said, and the coastal city of Alexandria, Egypt's second most populous, home to 5.2 million people. While the next light patterns I'm going to talk about are not necessarily due to any population patterns, they are still incredibly fascinating. Although the Berlin Wall, which divided the city between communist East Germany and democratic West Germany, fell the reunification of the country, evidence of the city's division is visible from space. The eastern half of the city emits a yellow light, while the western half shines a white light. The divide between the yellow and white light follows the former path of the Berlin Wall. This is because East and West Berlin use different lights from one another. Poorer East Germany maintained older lighting systems in their half of the city that give the eastern half of Berlin a yellow tint when viewed from space, while wealthier West Germany could afford newer fluorescent and LED lighting that give the lights of the western half of Berlin a white tint. When looking at a satellite image of the United States at night, you will see what appears to be a massive city about 600 miles north of Denver, similar in size to the patches of light that make up metropolises such as Chicago, Dallas, and Atlanta, it seems that you would be looking at one of the largest cities in the United States. But looking at the same map during the daytime, you will see that no such city exists. Where this non-existent city should be is a stretch of rural North Dakota, lying between Theodore Roosevelt National Park and the Missouri River. But a closer look will show you that this is not just farmland. Among the fields lie thousands of oil wells. When oil is brought to the surface, it often brings with it unwanted flammable gas, which is burned off in a process called gas flaring. What seems to be a massive city in rural North Dakota is in fact a vast oil field, and the city lights the flares of burning gas. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.